We call this gathering the art of allowing. And what it's really about is you finding ways, moment by moment, day by day, to allow as much of your connection to source energy as you can. I want to allow as much broader perspective as I can right now. I want to become such a vibrational match to who I am that I have the advantage of that broader perspective. And when you realize that the better you feel, the more tuned in, tapped in, turned on you are, and the worse you feel, the more you're pinching yourself off from that. You can never disconnect from it. You are always that, but you can tell by the way you feel how much of that broader perspective you are allowing. We know that there are many things that you are wanting. Sometimes you want to improve the conditions of your own physical life experience. We want that for you. We want you to be able to achieve manifestation of all kinds. But we want you also to come to understand that what your joy is really about is not the achievement of the things or even the relationships. It's the closing of that gap. It's the letting yourself be that which you have become. You are powerful, creative geniuses that came forth into this experience for the joy of the expansion, not because expansion needed to happen. You knew it was a given. There really is not a reason in the world for one more painting or one more piece of music to be written or one more anything. There's not a reason for anything in terms of the necessity of it. Other than, oh, you're having a hard time with that one, aren't you? <laughs> you think there are things that are needed by the world. And we want you to understand that nothing is needed. It is wanted. Ooh, ooh, now we're stepping all over your toes. <laughs> we're talking from your broader non-physical perspective where you understood that you would come into this body and that the variety would inspire you to individual desire. And you knew that when that desire emanated from you, that it would naturally begin to take shape and form. And that all you had to do then was become a vibrational match to what the world had caused you to ask for. And you weren't the least bit worried about it. In fact, further, you said, I'm not only not worried about it, I know that I have guidance that will help me know when I'm moving toward or away from what I am asking for. And so the art of allowing is about reminding you of this powerful emotional guidance system that you have that is within you that in every moment will help you to come into vibrational alignment with the you that you have become. We cannot cease to be. So you sort of have to go with the flow of that. And when you have allowed yourself to be projected into this body, into a time space reality that is full of contrast, that is evoking desires from you. You must find a way to keep up to speed with what life is calling through you. Because when you try to shut that down, you go out of your mind. Have you noticed? Sometimes we see you, something will happen and you'll feel a desire surface. And then you'll think to yourself, there's no way I can achieve that. And then you feel irritated that you now want it. The desire is torturing me. And we say, no desire was ever meant to torture you. Every desire was meant to represent the expansion that you are. And the torture is self-imposed because you're not letting yourself go with your own expansion. Well, I didn't mean to expand. <laughs> I didn't mean to want something that I believe I can't have. And we say, can you hear the power of those words? I didn't mean to want something that I don't believe I can achieve. And we say, the art of allowing is on working on the believing part of it because there is not anything that you cannot achieve. If this time space reality has given you the data to cause the desire to be born within you, that larger part of you, the vibrational part of you has become it. And we promise you, you can catch up with it. You cannot want something without the resources in this universe being infinitely available to help you achieve it. Infinitely available. Do you know whenever you want something, there are 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 very close to you avenues that are perched, ready to yield you a path. But you don't want the gradual path. You want the quantum leap. 
You want the impossible. You want to jump from depression into ecstasy. Do you get it that you are always emanated a vibration? And do you understand that law of attraction is responding to whatever that vibration is? And that what you think and what you feel and therefore what manifests in your experience is always a vibrational match. And so does it make sense to you that if you're beating the drum of something not wanted, that you are marching, 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 marching towards something that when it manifests and it will, you're not going to like it. And when you're beating the drum of something that feels good, you're marching, 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 marching towards something that when it manifests and it will, you will like it. 99 and then some 99.99 percent of every creation is complete vibrationally before you see physical evidence of it that's what we mean when we say your life experience has caused you to ask and source has become it and if you could just get a sense from us here today of how true that vibrational creation is you would never again doubt if you can have it. You just start pointing yourself in the direction of it and keep going till you got there. And if you knew that, you'd go steadily and you'd get there fast. As Jerry and Esther travel from Phoenix to San Diego, it's easy. 400 miles point west, keep going, not long. Quantifiable. They never, ever get halfway, Yuma, and freak out because they're not in San Diego. And then get all disoriented and turn around and go back to Phoenix. It never happens. Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma. How far did they say it was? <laughs> We've got 25,000 miles on the car and we're not there yet. <laughs> they never get halfway out there and then announce that San Diego is an impossible dream. Or that it is incurable. Or that it is only there for others and not for them. Or that they weren't born under the right star or to the right parents. They never, ever, ever, ever feel that way about that quantifiable journey. And we want you to understand that in exactly the same way, there is no place that you cannot get from where you are. But we see you. You're sick, feeling hopeful, on your way to recovery. Take another test and turn around and go back to Phoenix. And so you are making progress, but then you go back and you make progress, but then you go back and you make progress and then you go back. If you begin to understand that your work is to make it an emotional journey, let your journey to your financial fortune be an emotional journey, not an action journey. So how does that play out? Well, that plays out that you imagine it and you pretend it and you feel good about it or you even hope it. But you just can't keep saying it's not working, it's not working, it's not working, it's not working without turning around and going in the opposite direction. You've got to find a way to keep pointed in the right direction. And your emotions are that indicator. So in every moment, you've got two emotions. One feels one way and one feels slightly better. In other words, one feels good, one feels bad. If you will look at it in that way. Sometimes people will say, Abraham, I can't tell the difference on this. And we say, then keep focusing upon it until it becomes strong enough that you can feel it. Your emotions will always give you guidance. And when you decide to let yourself be guided by your emotion, now you quantify your journey. And now people who are watching you, who haven't caught on to what your magic is, will notice that things are manifesting faster for you. But what they will notice first is, you seem irrationally joyful anyway. <laughs> How's it going? They'll say, great, you say. Oh, did you get that job? No. <laughs> it's coming. Why are you so happy? Because it's coming. No, really, seriously. <laughs> Why are you so happy? Because it's coming. Well, did someone call you? No. <laughs> did you get the second interview? No. Why are you so happy? Because it's coming. <laughs> well, how do you know that it's coming? That's the big question. How do you know it's coming when the physical evidence is to the contrary? How do you know? I know law of attraction and I know how I've been feeling and I know that there's not a shred of evidence to the contrary of it. I know that when I feel this way, things are moving in the direction. I've been here before. I felt this way that one other time and it panned out well. In other words, 
you can let loose of all of the evidence that is to the contrary when you know the law and the law says that that which is likened to itself is drawn and what it means is the vibration that you are emanating is being matched and the evidence is soon to follow you live in this wonderful environment where there is a buffer of time and that buffer of time says it's not going to manifest in the first moment you thought it and friends that's a very very good thing because until you get really good at directing thought, you don't want every thought that you think to manifest. <laughs> but from a non-physical standpoint, in the stability of source, from the perspective where worlds are created, when you leading edge genius, worthy person out here on the leading edge of your experience lives something which causes you to delicately, infinitely, specifically identify something that you would prefer for you. Source says you ought to know, consider it done and becomes a perfect vibrational match to it. And in that moment calls you to it. And when you hear the call, even if it's rage, you're moving in the right direction. Nothing is more important than the way you feel. And if we were standing in your physical shoes, our mantra would be, nothing is more important than that I feel good. But then we would modify that by saying, nothing is more important than that I feel good. And today from where I stand, I'm going to do the best job I can of finding the best feeling thought that I can find from where I am. Not the best thought I've ever thought. Not the best feeling thought I've ever found. Not the best thought anybody has ever thought. Only the best feeling thought I can find from where I am. And as you care about that and you find an improved thought, you'll find another and another and another. And as you do it on one subject, you'll be able to do it on another and another and another and another. And the more you do it, subject after subject, the more you clean up your vibration until you become so expectant of good things to come to you. You know people like that, don't you? They offer a thought with calm and ease. They don't struggle about it. They don't work nearly hard enough in your estimation. <laughs> and things just go their way. How can that be? Because there's no contradiction in their vibration. So then you say, okay, suppose I play your silly game and I clean up my vibration. What do I do about all of those other people that are up close to me in my life who aren't having any of it? And we say, then the world is treating them the way they vibrate and the world is treating you the way you vibrate. And you say, yes, but this person's in my world. And we say, give your attention to the most positive aspects of that person. And that's the part of that person that will be in your world. Well, where will the rest of that person go? <laughs> the rest of that person will rendezvous with Henri toads at work <laughs> people who flip each other off in traffic <laughs> you get to the point where you begin to recognize that everything that comes to you is coming in response to something that you're doing do you know that there are diseases that are vibrational matches to fear and there are diseases that are vibrational matches to frustration and we got to tell you you want this one not this one do you know that there are traffic accidents that are vibrational matches to despair and total disempowerment? And there are traffic accidents that are matches to frustration. And there are traffic accidents that are matching anger. And there are the absence of traffic accidents that match appreciation. In other words, everything that comes to you matches where your average vibration is on those subjects see how it works everything that comes to you is evidence of your vibration so the first thing we want to say to you is if you begin to pay attention to the way you feel you will have pre-manifestational awareness and we want you to understand that you get to choose how close up you get to everything and when you start moving yourself in the direction of what you want you feel a desire to embrace the manifestations that are showing themselves to you because each manifestation is a little better than the last. That's how you tell if you're going in the right direction. Each manifestation is a little better than the last.